We are surrounded by stories of success. And which puts me in a in the zone of winning. I'm going to share what success looks like and how listening to successful people might not be the way to help build your future. So what is success? Well, it comes in many forms. For some, it's all about the followers. For others, it's the house or car they drive, or maybe it's just the bling. In the US, success is an integral part of their culture through the concept of the American dream. With the exploitation and exploration of this new land, Europeans set up new lives with the promise of future wealth and prosperity. Through this wealth capitalist ideal, a mixture of money, power, and celebrity wrapped into story have been the key elements of this shared story of success. And we are obsessed with stories of success and celebrity, with these stories being embedded into our culture, from criminals such as the outlaw Billy the Kid, or Bonnie and Clyde, to more recently, celebrity chefs like Gordon Ramsay. How is everything? Bad. And tech entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs. There is one more thing. So why the f is this interesting? There are thousands of videos that talk about success. You're trying to understand. understand. Uh, think them, think them, think them. Crazy? You know. A um, nothing is impossible. So why is this going to be any different? Well, I want you to understand that just as in history, success is told by the victors. This time, I leave. Which makes sense, right? But the problem with success stories is that they, in our opinion, forget to provide a broad enough view of how success happened. So why is that? Well, the first reason is about failure. We learn from failure, not success. We are so relieved to have succeeded that the last thing we can think about is what we could have done to improve. So when you're listening to these stories, have in mind that these are one person's version of success, but it's not the only one. So are we best to actually listen to stories of failure rather than success? Shouldn't we actually be looking to understand what went wrong and build this knowledge into our thinking and ways of working? You might ask, is there a difference? Well, let's take an interview or story from someone who's made it. It'll go something like this. I worked hard, I was consistent, things were hard in the beginning, but eventually I managed to be successful. Now let's listen to a story of failure. I worked hard, I was consistent, things were hard, but I still haven't been able to make that breakthrough. So we could say that maybe the successful person worked that bit harder, maybe they did that extra 5% that has become famous as to why some sports people become winners and others don't. But I think we're missing something. While hard work is always going to beat talent long term, a slightly motivated sports person with incredible genetics is always going to beat someone who isn't as genetically gifted. And that's the same when it comes to business success. Genetics in this case can come in the form of connections and even luck. Think about that I'm a self-made man, followed by the £1 million investment from the family. Or I worked hard and it just happened meaning a fluke viewing by Justin Bieber, who then goes on and shares it, is the just happened part. The language that has been set up within our culture is there to encourage the idea of hard work, but there is little, if any, discord about smart work. Think about the concept of going viral. The nature and language appears to make this something magical and unstoppable, like winning the lottery. Something that is almost given to us, but going viral isn't a thing. According to Derek Thompson, author of Hitmakers, when we examine why things become popular or go viral, it is really down to who you know or who sees your work. Stories and myth is created around these unicorns, a one in a billion moment where the seas part or where we're able to fight our way through the canyon and drop that bomb powering away from the explosion. And so there is no real metrics for average or okay. Where are the stories for the 90% of us? Where are the relatable ones? It's hard not to let ego expand our stories. After all, companies are competing not only for business, but also for talent. Do you want to go and work at an average organization? So how can we continue to compete with others, but maintain a realistic story? Well, in an organization, there is a reason why you're doing what you're doing. Some call this the brand story, or it can be described as your North Star. But next time you try and make this, Think about these things. How can I tell my story to help people understand my journey? How can I be brutally honest with our opinions and experience? How can I make my story relatable? Thanks for watching today. Do give us a like and let us know what you think in the comments. Do consider subscribing. We post videos nearly every week about strategy, digital, brand, design. Thanks again, stay curious and see you in the next one.